Hey, welcome. How are you? It is a beautiful Wednesday here in the great city of Indianapolis. Let's get right to it. WNBA legend. Remember, Clay Thompson's dad, Michael Thompson, came on the show and called the WNBA, quote, legends, the old guard, the angry old guard. And he was right. He used Jeep, jealousy, envy, ego, and pettiness. That was his acronym for the old guard of the WNBA. And it's nice to see now, as things have settled down at the All-Star break slash Olympic break, it's nice to see some of the old guard, maybe the queen mom of the old guard, Rebecca Lobo, at least the one with the most common sense. She's always had common sense. I've always liked Rebecca Lobo. But she hails Caitlin Clark as, wait for it, the best, wait, what? Best passer in the league. How about that? Talking about the all-star snub, Rebecca said best passer in the league. Proclaims it's scary that Caitlin is this good, even though she's not making threes at the rate she was while at Iowa. What? You're saying nice things? Rebecca Lobo, like most, anticipate that eventually Caitlin Clark will get back to hitting a bunch of threes, but she's doing what her team needs. Unbelievable. Stunning, I say. Remember. The old guard is filled with anger, jealousy. What else? Jealousy, envy, ego, and pettiness, said Michael Thompson. And it's nice to see somebody not qualifying anything. It's nice to see somebody as respected as Rebecca Lobo. And maybe this is why she's respected, because she seems to have common sense, not qualifying. How many qualifiers have we seen? Out of people praising Caitlin Clark. Yeah, but she's white. Yeah, but that's all she brings to the table. Yeah, but the level of stupidity when evaluating Caitlin Clark's game from current and former WNBA players is astounding. Nice to see someone stepping up. Here is Rebecca Lobo doing just that. She's incredible. I think, you know, Chelsea Gray over the course of the last few years has been the best point guard in the world and the best passer in the WNBA. I think right now Caitlin is right there, if not passing her in terms of the passing. I think she is the best passer in the league right now. Her, her, her turnover is all, always going to be a little bit high because of the chances she takes, especially with get-ahead passes. She's, uh, you know, looking to thread the needle, and, and oftentimes it makes her there and sometimes it doesn't. But, um, and and what's, what's remarkable, too, is she still hasn't found her three-point shot at the rate that she will. And, um, and, and but has adjusted. She's taking less of the logo bombs. She's driving more and finishing. So she's getting her points that way, and her assisting has been off the charts. It's been really, really fun to watch. It's really, really fun to watch in person. I loved how she had to clarify because as a white woman, you do not want to say that a white woman is a better point guard than an African-American, Claudine Gray or whatever the hell her name is. I mean, you can see that Rebecca Lobo made sure that she didn't step on any toes because she knows that the crazies out there at her own company will come at her. If you dare, dare do that. Look, I know how this game is played. I know how this game is played better than maybe anybody in the history of television. I know how this game is played. That was really funny. Actually, it's a subtle thing, but I look for subtleties because I am that kind of guy, but make no mistake. Caitlin Clark has come into that league and from jump been very, very good. In fact, this is why I'm talking about her today because I wanted to get this point and I hadn't made it enough. You know, the whole league has had to come to her. The whole league has had to jump up to her. Her whole team has had to jump up to her. And here's what you're going to start seeing. Mark my words. Like Magic Johnson and Larry Bird, passing became cool. Before, it was how many you got. What do you score? How many shots you take? And here comes Bird. Here comes Magic. Next thing you know, everybody's trying to make the pass. Everybody's trying to drop the dime, yo. But the truth of the matter is that's what's going to happen with Caitlin Clark. Little girls are going to start seeing it's cool to pass. WNBA players are going to start seeing it's cool to drop a dime in transition, go behind your back, drop a little low low looker. My favorite when I was a good player, when I was younger, when I would de- a three-on-two break or three-on-one break, I would pick up the ball, take my step, hold it in front of the defender, and bam, I saw Pistol Pete do it. Well, if Pistol Pete could do it, why wouldn't I do it? That's what passing does. Passing is contagious. Passing is cool. Logo bombs right now are numero uno. The WNBA ladies don't really go down the lane and dunk on each other. So what's next? 
being idiots like Kennedy Carter, being a mouth, getting your shot blocked like Angel Reese? Oh, I don't think so. Au contraire. No, 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 no. It's going to be ball handling. It's going to be passing. And it's coming to a city near you, promise you, in Indianapolis, where all you got to do is go to one fever game and you see 18,000 frantic Caitlin Clark fans, including about 9,000 girls uh, below the age of 14 in their Caitlin Clark jerseys. What do you think they are going to take away from watching her? Passing the basketball logo. Logo threes. That's right. And it's cool. It's very, very, very cool. And, frankly, it's going to make the game better. Nothing worse than some old wildebeest on the block fishing around trying to get a bucket from underneath the net. Nothing better than transition. Open court. Behind the back. No look. Behind the back pass. Between the legs. You name it. They got it. Now, that, to me, is where the action is. And a last thing on Caitlin Clark, and Rebecca Lobo is absolutely right. See, when you come in the league, a professional league, you're expected when you are one of the best players coming in, and Caitlin Clark has established that. In fact, she came in as the number one pick, which meant there was added pressure on her. You're expected to be a great player. You're expected to add to your game. I've said this all the time. Magic Johnson couldn't really shoot, became a terrific three-point shooter. Michael Jordan couldn't really shoot, became a terrific shooter from every area. In fact, it's interesting. People said Michael Jordan couldn't shoot. When I was in high school, Jordan and I were the same age, and I remember reading about him in some, uh, I don't know, publication, and it was excellent shooter going to North Carolina. Yeah, and then I heard he couldn't shoot. I don't know. Anyway, Magic Bird, on the block, fadeaways, Dirk Nowitzki, the one-step back move, all kinds of things like that. So she, Rebecca Lobo, is 1,000% right. If Caitlin Clark is going to be a truly great player, if Victor Wembanyama is going to be a truly great player, they will continue to add to their games. They will continue to add weight, add strength. I don't know about weight for Caitlin Clark, certainly Victor Wembanyama. So don't judge the book by the first year cover. Judge it, give her a few years, and you're going to see everything you want to see in a basketball player in Caitlin Clark. Not a woman's basketball player, uh uh-uh. Everything you want in a basketball player, regardless of gender. Promise you that one. Uh, This is very odd to me. My Harvard experience was this. The players at Harvard, I had a stepdaughter play softball, the players at Harvard get a bit indoctrinated. They, as young folk, think that everything is offensive. They, as young folk, evaluate everything. They, as young folk, get offended by most things. But this is outrageous to me, and I'm glad this woman is suing. At Harvard, there is a legendary... Hockey coach. Now, I'm going to say that again. Woman's hockey coach who for years and years and years, 29 years, was not paid as much as the legendary men's hockey coach. Her name is Katie Stone. And Katie Stone is one of the pioneers in women's hockey. Now, Katie Stone, 29 years, is suing the school after being fired over gender discrimination, blaming an HR investigation over a locker room comment. Now, I'm going to read the whole photo, Terry, but I'm going to tell you what the comment is. Listen to this. There are too many Chiefs and not enough Indians on our team. Now, I'm going to say that again. She said there are too many Chiefs and not enough Indians. Apparently, two little girls on the hockey team are Native American. They got offended. Aw, poor babies. Next thing you know. They went to wherever HR was. Now, I just want to say this to you. Can you imagine? I can't. You can. I can't. Can you imagine in any walk of life having something innocuous as that said, and I'm going to run and find HR, or I'm going to run and find my sport coordinator and tell on my coach or my boss or my coworker? Could you imagine? I can't. Now, I'm sorry. You may. I can't. If I got offended, I'm Polish. 
You know what the derogatory term is for Polish people. We don't really have one. I'm half Polish, half Serbian. We don't really have one for Serbians. Maybe we do. I just don't know it. But you know the derogatory term for Polish people. If Coach Knight or Coach Rogovich said to me, Doc, it's you, you know the word, I would have gone, huh. And let's just say I was offended. I would have been unoffended by the time I got to my car with my buddies and drove to Lincoln Sub and got the steel worker, uh, an orange pop, and some French fries. What is wrong with people? That offended you? You're playing hockey. People are trying to hit a puck into your head. And saying too many chiefs and not enough Indians made you whine, bitch, moan, and cry? What is wrong with you? And here's the deal with Harvard. And nobody can tell me different. See, the parents of athletes at Harvard are 1,010% conservative. And they laugh at their kids. And they say, yeah, you know, they're going to Harvard. Great opportunity. Unbelievable connections. Okay. But they'll come out of it in a few years. And they do. I've seen it for myself in my own household. You just laugh. But if you're really these two little Native American girls, I can't believe Coach said too many chiefs and not enough Indians. Well, if you want to look at it, she's praising everybody as being leaders. But, of course, that's not how two little girls playing hockey. Hockey at Harvard. Here's the deal. Former Harvard women's hockey coach Katie Stone filed a lawsuit against the school on Thursday or Tuesday for what she claims was forced retirement in 2023 and a history of being paid significantly less than her male counterpoint. Boy, do I hope she wins this. Honest to God, I don't know her, never met her. Always respected the fact that Harvard's women's sock or, uh, hockey was pretty I – like, I like the champions of women's sports. Like, I like old Hutch at Michigan when she was the coach. I do. I'm sorry, I do. Anyway, I digress. Claims she was forced retirement in the history of being paid significantly less than her male counterpart. Okay. Stone's allegations against one of the bastions of DEI of America come after a 29-year career while the, with the Crimson, during which she racked up a record that made her one of the most accomplished female hockey coaches in history. What was the locker room comment that sparked a full-blown investigation? Stone, while speaking to her entire team in 2022, used a common idiom, there are too many chiefs and not enough Indians. Because Harvard has two players at the time who were natives, Stone says she immediately apologized for using the phrase, which in and of itself is not overly problematic at least according to us, I think. I didn't stop the school from launching a full-scale human resources investigation into the program alongside another probe that was prompted by a survey of all athletic teams at the school. Listen to this. The secondary investigation was directed by former Harvard president Gay, who at the time was the dean of faculty of arts and sciences after she cited the hockey team as a red flag. Why did Harvard have the dean, of fa- uh, the dean of Faculty of Arts and Sciences investigating a hockey coach? And how is Claudine Gay, how is Claudine Gay, who later refused to condemn students who were calling for the genocide of Jews, qualified to probe into alleged has- harassment of anybody, much less the hockey coach? Well, the answer is this. Let me evaluate this twofold. First, you never apologize. Uh, You just don't. I mean, what what does an apology get you? Instead of apologizing, you say, look, I know you two are Native Americans, and if you're offended by that, just understand, I'm calling you all leaders. I mean, I don't know if you know this, Native American gals, uh, but chiefs are leaders. We have too many leaders. It's amazing, though, that one innocuous comment that means literally nothing, that is so unoffensive to anybody with half a brain, much less an entire Harvard working brain, could ever be offended. But I have a tendency to think in reality. So two little girls that are hockey players get mad, and they're looking around going, oh, my God, I can't believe it. This is what women do. My wife will tell you, I don't care if this offends women, be offended. My wife, I can sit her down right now, read her this story, and she'd be like, well, of course. It's what women do. Probably what dudes do, too, if they don't like the coach. 
Can you imagine sitting down? Well, I'm offended. Are you offended? Yes, I'm offended. Where do we go? And, of course, the school gives you a whole list of places where to go if somebody happens to say something that, oh, my God, I can't believe I just heard. And so they march right in, go do their thing, and next thing you know, 29 years. There's no equity in coaching anymore. There's no equity in anything. I can do this show for 15 years. Say the wrong thing, gone. I get that. We all get that. It's not my boss's fault. It's not anybody's fault. It's just the world that we live in. Hopefully that world will change, but I got to tell you, if the far-left crazy woman wins the election, we got serious problems, but I digress. So anyway, Harvard being Harvard, we learned a lesson. Number one, do not, do not ever apologize. Number two, and here's a stunner, oh my God, an African-American woman that shaves her head gets, that says, hey, look, I'm not going to condemn genocide of Jews on a campus who's basically funded over the years by Jewish people who got fired. And I will tell you this, there is no chance that this Claudette Gray, gay, whatever the hell her name is, didn't have more things like that. You don't get your speeding ticket the first time you speed. So all of a sudden, this woman, because of who she is, not really, but because of what she represents physically, gets to be judge and jury, which I'm going to get to my point, which is, man, I'm not surprised by the hypocrisy of the left. I'm not surprised by the hypocrisy of Harvard. I'm not surprised by the douchebaggery of any of it. You could tell me that this woman Stone pushed a player. I wouldn't give a rat's ass. 29 years, she has made women great. And I looked at this. So many of her players are standing up for her. So many. But two little girls that are Native Americans that were taught to be offended by everything decided, I'm just trying to picture this. Aaron Spielberg and I are playing basketball at Indiana. Coach Knight asked me a question. You're either the dumbest SOB or you don't listen. Which one? Coach, I always listen. He asked Spielberg the same thing. Aaron says, Coach, I listen. We get together after. Well, that was offensive. Oh, my God, I can't believe that happened. And we're bitching at it. And we decide to do what? You know what we decide to do? Eh, Let's get something to eat. Now let's laugh about it. But I don't even know how I would run to HR. Maybe everybody in the world knows how to run to HR. I have no idea. The only thing I know about HR is I got to fill out another form for Fox saying that I won't, I don't know, harass anybody in the work. I don't know what the hell. I promise I won't. And I promise, Gary, I will fill it out. Hey, we're pissed. Let's go to HR. I told you this story. I was doing sports. uh, I was doing half times. It was 2 o'clock in the morning. We were doing it in shorts, jacket, and tie. They asked us to move sets over here, so we had to put on pants. I went behind the set, looked around. Nobody was around. Took off my shorts, put on my pants. 2.30 in the morning, I walk out. Guy in a suit, HR. Uh, Which one of you is Daniel Dockage? Me. Well, we had an HR complaint. What the hell did I do? It's 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm here. We're not drunk. We're not at the Cadillac Ranch. What are you talking about? (laughs) Cadillac Ranch was a bar over there that I liked going to. Well, one of the interns saw you undressing. When I explained it to the guy, I said, look, arrest me, but it's 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to bed. So this little intern, I guess there was a camera somewhere. Uh, Oh, my God, I'm offended. I'm going to HR. Can you imagine? No chance was I apologizing. I had to put my pants on, damn it. I had to. Hey, uh, you know, I've talked about this before. My body, my choice. Women always say that. Well, here's your choice. Don't spread your legs for some clown. Don't spread your legs for a guy. That's your choice. Don't spread your legs for a guy. That's a jackass. Here's another choice. Make the guy wear a condom. Have some self-respect. If you're going to throw it around, do you, a choice. Use birth control. Kind of simple. Same thing with guys. If you're going to throw it around, there's like 11 methods of birth control out there, one of which for a guy is a condom. Tyreek Hill has never learned this. Tyreek Hill, the cheetah, whatever the hell he calls his dumb, ridiculous ass, and maybe he is a cheetah because apparently he's just a farm animal that goes around fucking. I mean, that's what he does. I'm sorry I said that, having sex with beautiful people. But that's not what he does. 
Listen to this. He wants a new contract with the Dolphins. He needs as much money as he can with a track record of getting women pregnant. He's got like 11 kids. Doesn't know who they are. Doesn't know where. Doesn't know nothing. I think he has three currently pregnant or two at least currently pregnant. Now think about that for a second. That's not a human being. I have a whole wildlife in my backyard. My brother-in-law, who is a massively strong and tough iron worker in Detroit, came and stayed with us. He wanted to sleep outside because that's what he does. He came back inside. He said, man, I don't know what the hell's going on out there, but there are rapes and sex and screeches and how He goes, I'm out of here. That's farm animals. That's wildlife animals. And that's what Tyreek Hill's got going, man. And he needs money. Hell yeah. Baby mama drama, that comes with a price tag. And guess what? Charles Barkley said on every show that I've had him on, hey, look, man, Dr. J told him, you got to make this money last. And if you're out there buying cars and impregnating women, that money goes fast. Anyway, uh, he had a clear message for his agent, Drew Rosenhaus. Don't get me traded again, bro. He went on to say his quest for 2,000 yards was very selfish of him and is focused on team-oriented goals this year. Oh, all right. Let's hear from him. Uh, I don't know. To be honest, I have no idea. Um, obviously, I let Drew and, you know, the, the team handle that in the situation. And the only thing I told Drew was, like, do not get me traded, bro. <laughs> Last time you did this – you got me traded. So that's been my only thing to him. I'm like, if I – I want to stay here in Miami, man, because um, obviously this is where family is now. Um, my, everybody loves it here. Family loves it. Wife loves it. Kids love it. So obviously I love it. I love playing for coach. And the team – my teammates are awesome. So um, I wouldn't want to leave, man. The fans are awesome too, man. I, I just love how the fans hold us accountable every day on Twitter. So we're getting better, I promise you. We're not just sitting around, you know, drinking smoothies. We're getting better. So, <laughs> yeah. Now let me ask you a question. If your job was to sit in there and listen to this idiot, what's so funny about what he said? Like, this is what always cracks me up. Uh, this is what absolutely makes me, you know, some guy with four baby mamas and going to be gone in, you know, two years, says something, oh, man, you know, I love it here. <laughs> What's so funny about that? I've told you this before. When I was a coach in Indiana for like seven weeks, I'd say something incredibly stupid to big, fat, dumbass boosters of Indiana and watch them laugh and look at my then wife and go, it's just a game that I play. The official number of kids is seven, four baby mamas. They say that he could have as many as 10 children all across the country. But his kids love Miami. I mean, there are ways of birth control. All right, here's him talking about how selfish it is for him to want to go for 2,000 yards. Um, I will say for me, man, last year is last year. Obviously, it was great for me to come out and say, uh, X, Y, Z, I want to get 2K, you want to do this and that. That will be great. You know, grand scenario, that would be great. But I feel like at, at the same time, I have to understand that um, the, the position that I'm in and me being one of the leaders and just singling out, you know, an individual goal like that, like because I had time to go look at it, talk about it with my family. And it's like, that's very selfish of me, you know. So here moving forward, uh, individual goal I've been talking about this whole entire offseason with my teammates, with my family, um, is I would want us to, A, win a playoff game. I would love that, you know, we're going to start with that. Then moving forward, like continuing to build on that, you know, we're going to move to the Super Bowl. So it's one step at a time. Like if if I'm able to, you know, help this team, you know, do something special as a team goal, I would definitely count that as like an individual goal as my own. Um, and that'll feel good. That'll be something that I can live with for the rest of my life. So that'd be great. Yeah, man. Now, this is a dude that got charged in 19. He was suspended by Kansas City over alleged child abuse allegations, reinstated after the district attorney didn't have enough evidence to listen to this, break his little kid's arm. I mean, this guy is just awful. I mean, and you got, if, can you imagine, hey, man, Tyreek Hill is talking. Really? <laughs> okay. 
I mean, look, as an adult male with a penis who is older than 10 years old, I'm not sure that would be very exciting. Okay, man, you know, okay, all right, you're 30 years old, you got 10 kids, and we're going to hear the story soon about how you're broke. Now, I will say this, I was reading up on Tyreek here, I don't know how he's done it. Dude's made $30 million a year, and he's paying some of these women as little as $2,500 a month. That's a Social Security payment. I don't know how he's doing it, but some of these women are like, yo, 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 shows they're not very bright either. Man, oh, man, there are a lot of ways not to do that. No, there are, seriously. One of them's abstinence, but that's not going to happen. The withdrawal method seems like it works sometimes, sometimes not, but there's a bunch of other ways. But man, oh, man, you wait for it. You know you're going to hear it. A couple years from now, three, four, broke. That's sad. No, it is. It, it, it is sad. I don't feel bad for anybody. It's just sad that people are that stupid. Uh, Paul Feinbaum ripped into Ryan Day. Paul Feinbaum's ripping everybody. Ratings must be down. He must see that Stephen A. Smith money by being just the uh, bookish-looking contrarian. That's not enough. He's seeing, he's seeing Pat McAfee, Stephen A. Smith money, and he's saying to himself, yo, gimme. Gimme, 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 gimme. I want some of that. How do I get it? Be loud. Be loud. Be controversial. What if Paul Feinbaum can say stupid stuff like Ryan Clark? I'll get to him in a minute. I don't think so. I think if Paul Feinbaum went political, they'd fire him six seconds into it. Long story short, Feinbaum ripped Ryan Day for his comments he made on first take while discussing the team's motivation for beating Michigan this upcoming season. Feinbaum has now moved into the aura of coach. Good for Feinbaum. Here he is. You know, in all of the Big Ten games, Day spoke on Get Up earlier about being better against their biggest rival. I think probably one of the biggest, you know, struggles that we have is that, you know, when you when you lose a game like that, you know, you have to wait a whole nother year to get back into that game. And, you know, for our guys who decided to come back, you know, we had a about 12 guys that made the decision to come back. That was one of the big reasons why they decided to come back. But what we have to do is build every day and grow every day and count on the work that we're doing on a daily basis that's going to matter as we get to the end of the season. And, you know, what we can't do is get too far ahead of ourselves and start to focus too much on that and get distracted. That's just the bottom line. But when you come to Ohio State, you got to win that game. All right, Paul, you're up first, my friend. You don't look too amused. Uh, is Ryan, yeah, Ryan Day? Uh, Ryan Day, I, I. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Paul. I, I, Molly, I have no idea what he's talking about. I mean, he's lost that game three years in a row, and he's talking about how he's uh, his players are motivated to come back and play. Well, I heard that three years ago, two years ago, and last year, and you you stunk in all three games. Uh, I mean, what are you talking about? And here's the problem with talking about Ryan Day. You look at his record, and I'm sure Doggy will quote it and Stephen A. will quote it. It's gaudy. Nobody has a record like him, except you can't choke the biggest game of the year. And to me, if he can't beat – Michigan this year when he's got probably the best team in the country along with Georgia after Harbaugh leaves, after all those great players depart after a national championship, uh, he ought to be gone. I, I mean, that, that is, it's simple as that. That's the biggest game of the year in the Big Ten. And I realize that Ohio State played for a national championship a couple years ago against Alabama. Well, only lost by 28 points. They've been to the playoffs. But they still that program hasn't won a national championship since 2014 when Urban Meyer was there. So quit making excuses, Ryan Day. Quit acting like your players have given up something to come back. Uh, three years ago, they came back. Two years ago, they came back. And one year ago, they came back. And it's been the same result. Result, o versus the last three games against Michigan. That's literally the dumbest response I've ever heard on a really dumb network. You know, all of a sudden he's yelling and screaming. Uh, what's Ryan Day supposed to say? No, seriously, what's Ryan Day? What, what Feinbaum said right there is nothing new, nothing interesting. He just said he's lost three times to Michigan. So what's Ryan Day? That happened. So what's Ryan Day supposed to do? What's he supposed to quit? Every player's supposed to leave? They lost three times against Michigan. It is a fact. They won a bunch of times before that. It is a fact. It happens in sports. So what's, what's the problem with what Ryan Day had to say? It is amazing, and it gets more and more amazing every single time I hear Feinbaum. Feinbaum has become a clown, and now I don't like that. I like Feinbaum. 
But Feinbaum yelling and screaming like a complete dumbass about what Ryan Day said is the epitome of lunacy, posturing, pandering, and it's ridiculous. Ryan Day didn't say anything wrong. What's he supposed to say? I mean, he can't change the outcome, and neither can Feinbaum. But Feinbaum's still bitching about the outcome. Look, as a coach, you know you got a game coming up September whatever, late August. Can't change what the hell happened, so you put your head down, you go to work on the next one. What's the, what does this idiot Feinbaum think Ryan Day is supposed to say? Ah, we quit. We're going to give up hope because we lost. We got our ass kicked. And I told you this before, and I'll tell you this again. There's always the list when it comes to a coach. There's always, did you hear what he went back to? They haven't won a championship since 14. They got beat by 28. You gloss over the positive. Yes, they've been in the playoffs. No, no, no. There's a lot of schools, a lot of coaches that Feinbaum will not criticize that are at major programs that haven't been to the playoffs, that haven't played Alabama even though they lost by 28. Now, it's the world we live in. And I've said this before, and it's a complete bullshit. It is complete and utter bullshit. When you get on the wrong side of the media and it becomes popular to rip your ass, because right now it is very unpopular to say anything positive about Ryan Day, period. It's not popular. So every douchebag without a spine who is catering to an audience, find Bum's contract, I'll bet you money, is coming up within a year or two. I'll bet you. And he's an old white guy. In a, in a company that doesn't respect old white guys, doesn't want old white guys, except in management positions for their 401ks and their stock options, and he's trying to reinvent himself as this loud, angry guy. And it just falls on deaf ears because he is a bookish, wimpy guy. Ripping on a guy who every single day has to live with three straight losses, and it really pisses me off. Ryan Day didn't say a damn thing wrong in that interview. If you're going to rip his ass, rip him while he's on. Don't rip him when he gets off because little Molly or some little girl asks you a question. No. No, 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 no. No. Don't. No, it's chicken blank. And it's easy. Well, he lost his. He lost. Yes, he did. He also won. Well, he's got a great record, and you guys will tell me, but that don't matter. Oh, okay. Nothing matters except what this idiot wants to matter, and that is the new media. Facts don't really matter. Comparisons don't really matter. It's your narrative as loud as you can make it, as strong as you can make it, on an easy target. I guarantee you, if you took Ryan Day out of Ohio State and you moved in Deion Sanders, yes, Feinbaum might be hard on him, but not like that. We all know the game. You got a white coach here in a major program. We all know the game. That has not succeeded to the point you think he should. So guess what's going to happen? He's going to get crushed. It's an easy target. Wonder if he yelled and screamed about Mel Tucker at Michigan State when he was stooping the lady that was coming in to talk to his team and then paying her and then lying. I guarantee he didn't. That, to me, seems more egregious than losing a couple games to Michigan. Maybe not to you football prognosticators, but it does to me. The level of stupid that continues to pour out of ESPN is just absolutely astounding to me. It's astounding. File this under you knew it was coming. You knew it was coming. No, I'm not talking about Biden out. Biden doesn't even know he's out. I saw him yesterday. Jill Biden is headed to the Olympics, ditching her husband, Sleepy Joe, amid the most embarrassing moment of his career. Despite her husband's life being turned upside down and every reputable news organization in the world talking neg- negatively about the president, Dr. Jill sees this moment. As a perfect time for a vacation in Paris. Look, I'm the first lady. They can hook me up, yo. The White House released a statement Monday announcing that Jill Biden will be headlining the presidential delegation heading to Paris for the Games and will be present for Friday's opening ceremony because we have a president that is so incapacitated, he can't even go do that. So he's sending his wife. This move from the first lady shouldn't come as a surprise whatsoever. 
There is no more out-of-touch group of individuals than those at the top of the current White House administration. Plus, Jersey Joe is now a loser who will lose power in the coming days, and not even his own wife can get past that fast-approaching reality. He's right. Absolutely right. This is why OutKick is awesome, because we tell you what's up. Hey, Joe, let's go. We're going to Paris. What? What? Oh, oh, what? No, here's the deal. <clears throat> here's the deal. You got front runners. She knows she's got to get on with her life. The useful idiot is no longer useful. The next time we'll see here, her, get out of here, eh? uh, flea. The next time we'll see her is fake grieving over a casket. No, I'm just telling you, this is the way the world works. Fake grieving, I bet you she's already moved on to some other dude. Remember, there's a great song in country music called Then What? It basically talks about don't cheat on your wife with somebody because once you leave your wife for the one you cheated on, then what? Uh, Is the old going to shine through, meaning she's going to become a cheater too? What's going to happen? Are you going to trust each other? Well, remember, Jill Biden was the nanny for Joe Biden and his wife. Joe started stooping Jill. Somehow he married Jill. Then what? Wonder how many times they've been stooping out or stepping out, stooping one uh, somebody else. The song Then What is genius. It's absolutely genius, and it's absolutely true. I'm not saying Jill Biden's cheating on anybody. I'm saying that if you are a dirtbag, dirtbag behavior shines through, as it says in the story. Hey, Joe, my useful idiot of all these years, you're done. I'm moving it along. Absolutely. You'll see her crying at a casket in the rotunda, which, by the way, a bunch of protesters invaded yesterday. Let's see if Jersey Joe does anything about it. Won't happen. But anyway, that's what you'll see, and this is the most predictable thing ever. Absolutely predictable, absolutely 1,000% predictable, and away we go. Herm Edwards is going to join us. i got to ask him his thoughts. A lot of guys, C.D. Lamb next, boycotting camp. We talked about Aaron Rodgers coming into camp, missing a couple days. And, of course, others at camp, like Jordan Love, but not participating in camp. It's a very odd thing going on in the NFL. It's common, but odd. We'll be right back with Coach Herm Edwards. 